So I'm Emily Barber from University of Oxford and I'm part of the Esther Deltas project. So you've already heard a few presentations yesterday about the Esther Deltas project. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, how we've developed a number of scenarios within the project and as part of this how we've integrated uh, some biophysical components, socio-economic components, uh, looked at policy implications and we've done that, this in consultation with, with stakeholders. So as part of this project we've used scenarios as a tool to assist in future, uh, planning for the future. So the first part of this process uh, is trying to understand the current system as, as well as possible. And this is in itself is an incredibly complex, a challenging task given that these are complex systems. The next part is looking at the potential impacts of future changes and then looking at what sorts of uh, management interventions and policy interventions can be used to mitigate the negative uh, future impacts and try and maximise uh, the beneficial outcomes in the future. So we've used scenarios to investigate these two latter components in terms of looking at what the future may look like and how effective different, um, different management and policy interventions may be. These uh, two components of course are interrelated in that the management interventions uh, that you put in place now will influence the impact of these future changes and what ultimately the outcome will be. This diagram here uh, gives an overview of the different components that are part of the ESPA Deltas projects, so the different work packages. Uh, so a number of these have already been introduced yesterday, but it shows the integration of, of multiple different components. So we've got some, uh, the biophysical models, uh, socio-economic components, looking at the influence of governance, and then integrating these together both in terms of modelling, but also in terms of developing a number of different scenarios. These are then used to influence um, policy and the whole process is part of an iterative loop that's engaging with stakeholders uh, throughout all of these different stages. So I'm now going to uh, go through the, the approach that we've used as part of the ESPA Deltas project to develop scenarios. This just gives a summary starting with uh, we developed uh, some qualitative narratives we then looked at how we could translate these uh, into a more quantitative form and could use this within a modelling process. And again, uh, in engaging with stakeholders uh, throughout this process. We looked at few, uh, two different types of future changes. Uh, Attila presented these yesterday. Uh, changes in terms of climate as well as changes in terms of development. So today I'm going to, to give a brief overview of the, the process that we used in terms of developing narratives, the modelling component, uh, the stakeholder engagement and then go through and give some examples of the type of uh, development scenarios that, that we looked at. The framework that we used to develop scenarios was based on the IPCC shared socio-economic pathways. These scenarios were developed very much with a climate change focus but also looking at changes in development strategies. They had a global focus but the intention here was to develop some scenarios that could be comparable across different studies and across different regions. So these varied from a more sustainable future or more sustainable development patterns through to ones that were, had a lot of inequality and also that were more fossil fuel dependent. So as we use this as a framework we then uh, uh, developed our own set of scenarios and we did this so that we can make the scenarios relevant to our uh, case study area in coastal Bangladesh. We needed to uh, make them regionally relevant and we incorporated a number of different components and made it a, a lot more detailed and interdisciplinary. The scenarios that we then used uh, included a business as usual scenario. The assumption here is that previous development patterns continue into the future. So this in itself is considered um, by most of the stakeholders an unsustainable scenario. We then looked at some options that uh, could create a more sustainable or slightly better scenario as well as different um, alternatives that would create a less sustainable scenario. You saw this, um, the table that's behind here yesterday in Attila's presentation. So we've combined these three different types of development scenarios with three different types of uh, future climates. 
to give us a total of nine baseline scenarios to take into account some of the uncertainties about what the future may look like. So I'm now going to go through uh, the, the process that we used, starting with the development of our scenario narratives. This began with a workshop late last year uh, with stakeholders that was used to identify a number of the key issues that stakeholders felt were important and had an impact on ecosystem services and poverty. Uh, Andrew presented a number of these issues in his presentation yesterday and these included a number of issues around governance. We then used these key issues to develop some storylines and narratives for our three different future uh, development scenarios. And this text down here gives an example of, of, some of, the, of part of the narratives that were developed. So this was for a more sustainable future, looking at some changes in land use, uh, incorporating changes in, in agriculture and access to markets and so forth. So once these uh, three different narratives were developed, we then held a second stakeholder workshop that was in May this year and we presented these narratives to stakeholders. There are around 100 um, stakeholders, national level stakeholders who came along and we asked them to uh, see whether they agreed with the narratives, whether there are any things they, additional things they thought should be included. Uh, we asked them to check for internal consistency. This was quite a key uh, workshop in terms of uh, engaging stakeholders at the start of the process of developing scenarios. And in addition, it was quite important, given that it was attended by a number of people involved in developing a Delta plan for Bangladesh. This has been driven very much by the government of Bangladesh and there were some areas that were identified where our project um, and the development of scenarios and modelling tools could actually feed into that Delta plan. Uh, and in addition to that, um, in the preparation of the, the current, um, the next five-year plan. The next stage was then to look at how we can translate these qualitative narratives into something that we could actually model. So we called this a Q to Q, a qualitative to quantitative process. So this was quite an important process uh, given that um, being able to use the modelling tools gives us some flexibility to look at the uh, effectiveness of different management and policy interventions for these different possible future scenarios. In some cases, it was quite easy to translate aspects of the narrative into something that can be uh, quantified. Uh, so as you saw from Attila's presentation yesterday, there are a number of different modelling components within the project. So looking at things like changes in river flow, uh, water quality, uh, looking at changes within the delta, uh, changes in mangrove uh, extent and mangrove species. In other areas, such as looking at the influence of governance, uh, as Andrew talked about, uh, it becomes much more difficult in terms of how we can actually quantify these, these changes. So we looked at where we could actually relate our governance to something that we could model. Um, for example, how implementation and enforcement can affect fisheries management or how looking at different levels of international cooperation we could represent that around our, our different river flow management rules. We're also looking at what aspects of these qualitative scenarios are best left in a more qualitative form. So still looking at uh, the influences of management options and how these may change in the future but that we're not actually going to incorporate in, in the modelling process. As part of this translation from qualitative into quantitative, we also uh, held a number of uh, held a stakeholder workshop, and this was a key, a, another key part of the process. Given that a number of assumptions needed to be made in order to go from qualitative into quantitative, for example, uh, one of the things we were interested in is the impact of dam development on water flows. And whilst we may uh, make some assumptions that there will be future dam development. There are all sorts of assumptions about which dams will be developed and how that will actually influence um, changes in flows. So to, to aid that process, instead of us making all these assumptions within the project, uh, we talked to, to different um, expert groups and asked them to identify what, what they thought some of these assumptions should be. 
So we started by initially estimating within our project team what, what some of these assumptions could be. And then we held, um, we developed a number of uh, questionnaires. And then we held some uh, group discussions. The reason why we started with some questionnaires was because we wanted to get some idea of what individuals thought um, changes may be into the future. This gives us an idea of what some of the uncertainty is around looking at future change. We then held some group discussions to see how people change their views when they talk together and tried to develop some consensus views of, of some of the future changes that may occur. The next part of the process will be to run the integrated model uh, using these different scenarios and to take the results back to stakeholders to have further discussions around whether they feel their assumptions uh, were appropriate or whether any changes um, are necessary. So the workshop that we held a few weeks ago uh, was where we uh, used these different questionnaires and group discussions. And this was also quite an important part um, of our project um, from a number of different reasons. The first of these um, was that we had people from a number of different sectors attend. For example, we had people from uh, water management, uh, people who are experts in fisheries, in agriculture, and also from um, experts in, in migration and experts in poverty. And some of the feedback that we got from that uh, workshop was that they found it really useful to have discussions around some of these challenging um, issues about future changes across different organisations. It was also important in terms of uh, getting the stakeholders engaged within the modelling process. Uh, and the aim here is to ensure that there's, um, there's belief in, in the models that we're using and and hopefully that these tools will be something that can be used within, um, by decision makers into the future. And in addition for us as part of the project, it was an important way of, of gathering information. So I'm now going to give just a couple of examples of some of the development scenarios that we looked at um, and some of the, the outcomes from the, the questionnaires that we held, that we used. So this is just a few examples. So we looked at um, some changes that could affect water availability. For example, um, dam development increases in population and water extraction. And Rajiv Sinha in the next presentation is going to talk a little bit more about these. The influence of uh, different crop varieties on agricultural yields, changes in fishing effort, or things such as changes in literacy and employment. And this snapshot here, um, you probably can't read that, but it gives an example of of um, part of the questionnaire for the biophysical component where we looked at uh, different scenarios of dam development under a um, less sustainable, for a more sustainable future for different time periods. This diagram here uh, gives an example of some of the assumptions that were made around changes in employment in coastal Bangladesh um, from current through to future for the three different scenarios. Uh, we presented this to stakeholders and asked them whether or not they agreed with these assumptions. And this uh, shows some results from the individual questionnaires showing that in the majority of cases, our respondents did agree with the assumptions that had been made. And where they didn't, we asked them to quantify what they thought those assumptions would be. So again, this gave us a range of, of possible responses where the majority agreed with our assumptions, but we also got an idea of some of the uncertainty. And some different values that we could test within the model. And this just gives an example of uh, one of the questions that we asked um, on the more socioeconomic component. This is looking at changes in migration, asking people to, to look at the three different scenarios and how those different migration processes may change. So up until now, we've focused very much on development of the, some baseline scenarios in terms of looking at the impact of future changes. The next stage of the process is looking more at now working with, with stakeholders to identify some of the management and policy interventions that they would like investigated and how that will then influence these future scenarios. So this again is part of, of an iterative process where we've started here with our baseline scenarios, we've gone from a qualitative to quantitative process use an integrated model to look at lots of different scenarios, translated this back into a more semi-qualitative component to have discussions with decision makers 
so that we can then look at what sort of adaptation responses we would like investigated. So in summary, uh, the scenario process that we've, we've gone through so far is a relatively novel approach in that we've used SSPs, the socio shared socioeconomic pathways, but gone to a local level and used, uh, looked at a lot more detail about a range of different changes across different sectors that will, are likely to occur within coastal Bangladesh. It's been an interdiscipl interdisciplinary approach and uh, we've, we've consulted with stakeholders um, throughout the process and the development of the narratives through the more quantitative um, side of the process. We've also looked at multiple scales, uh, both in terms of developing scenarios for the wider um, basin, the Ganges, Brahma Future, Magna Basin, uh, down to looking at scenarios relevant for the case study area. In addition, we're interested in comparing some of the, the outcomes from our national level stakeholders in terms of their perceptions around issues such as poverty and migration and how that relates to outcomes from the household level survey that Daruba presented uh, yesterday. And part of this is, is looking at uh, trying to improve the, the impact and legacy of the work, again, through working with stakeholders and ensuring that they're involved in, in the process of the, developing the, the modelling tools and the scenarios with the aim that they, um, they can be used in planning uh, into the future. Thank you. <laughs>